Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mind Body TV. I'm here with Kimberly Hayworth. I am Dr. Kim Duramo. Um, we do these broadcasts each week to share insights about mind body healing, um, science, medicine about how the body heals itself. And today is our start of the Mind Body Miracles series where I wanted to share with you individuals I've worked with through this journey who've had really remarkable results, um, healing really severe illnesses, overcoming um, physical, mental, emotional things that doctors said you know were not possible, um, because I feel it's really a powerful thing for us to see the, the evidence and hear the stories ourselves rather than just let this be an idea about what's possible or about the science or about here's how you're body heals, but a real tangible experience of not only what's possible, but what that journey is like. What does it actually take to open to this and allow those physiologic changes and allow healing in the body? So what we'll see over these next several weeks are individuals who I've worked with live, who've been in my, um, my, uh, my Embracing Health program and have had really an extraordinary journey or, or maybe even kind of like a rocky journey but seen firsthand what's possible. So welcome to the series. I have Kimberly Hayworth here. I'm gonna introduce her in a second. I'd like to see um, the comments if you wanna post where you're joining from, where you're listening from. Um, I know there's individuals here, but I don't see any of the comments yet. So I just wanna make sure that that's working. Okay, uh, and we'll, yes, well, We'll see what we get as we go. Usually we have a lot. Here we go. All right. Got some individuals coming in. Hi, Julie. Hi, Kathy. Great. Iowa, Ireland. Uh, we'll see what else. Good. Krista from Canada. Someone in Facebook from UK. Oh, great. Great. Suzanne from Oklahoma. Chantel from Montana. Anne from UK. Sheffield. Jillian from UK as well, Gabriella from London, LMZ from New Mexico, Rachel, hello from UK, Rebecca from the Netherlands, Jennifer from Michigan. Okay, we have lots of people coming in really quickly, so this is really exciting. Great to see you guys. So um, we have, uh, Kimberly has basically come through this journey where she had fibromyalgia, which I think a lot of people in the community have experienced that. You could this pain syndrome in your body. And it's a little bit of um, what's thought of like a wastebasket term in medical med medical field. Cause it's like, I can understand what this is, but I have no idea why you have it, what's going on or what I can do about it. And there's like not a lot of answers. Chronic fatigue syndrome, which is another one of those like no man's land. There aren't a lot of good solutions from the conventional perspective or treatment strategy, Epstein-Barr virus and Lyme disease. Um, and has really come through an incredible journey with resolving illness. And I'm going to let her share her journey of this. But, you know, I'm grateful that she was willing to come forward and, and share her story and contribute to you guys. So welcome here, Kimberly. Thank you. It's my pleasure. And, you know, it's been an amazing journey. And I'm so grateful to be here with you today. Um, I was diagnosed, like Dr. Kim said, with fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, Epstein-Barr virus, um, Lyme disease, a whole host of co-infections. I had heavy mold toxicity, parasites, worms, H. pylori, you name it, I had it. I was also diagnosed with MS at one point. And, you know, <laughs> I, I did the round with Western medicine. I tried all the treatments and I, went to the doctors. I did specifically what they told me to do to the T. You know, sometimes it was sheets and sheets of papers. You know, this is this is what we're what we want to do. This is what's going to make you well. And it never did. And I started searching and I did treatment with Eastern medicine. And none of those things were very helpful at the time. And then I tried alternative things, some crazy stuff you've probably never even heard of. I was so desperate to be well, and I would try anything. And, you know, I got to the point, it was about 15 years of back and forth through doctors and treatments, and I was as sick as ever. I was down to about 82 pounds, 
my gut was shutting down. I couldn't tolerate foods anymore. And, you know, the treatments were not working. All those things were still alive and well in my system, but I sure was not. I was at the end of the rope, at the bottom of the barrel. And I decided I was done. I was done. I wanted my life back. And I wasn't really sure how to get there, but I knew what I wasn't going to do. <laughs> and what I wasn't going to do was what I had done for so long. And I was going to take my power back from the doctors because I had gone in with a mindset of expecting them to fix me, to make me well. And then when they didn't, I was so discouraged. And I, okay, you know, you pull up your britches and you try something new, right? <laughs> and, and you can only do that with your own willpower for so many years, right? And 15 years in, I was like, I'm done. I know this is not the path for me anymore. So I stopped on all of my treatment. I went up to Lake Tahoe and just sat on the beach. And, you know, I had felt clarity and peace like I hadn't in probably my entire life. And I started to hear and um, notice guidance and direction about where I was going to go because I had no idea at that point. I didn't know what I was going to do. But mind body medicine was one of the first things that came up for me. And tapping EFT was one of the things. And I had heard about it in the past, but I really didn't know anything about it. So I started studying those things. Um, things like physical therapy and um, acupuncture and things like that. There were different pieces that started to um, come into play as being more beneficial. So that was the start, what I would consider of my healing journey. You know, I'd like you to share a little bit about like, what were the symptoms specifically yeah. um, and what was your life like at that point? Like what could you do or not do? What did you have to give up? everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was so sick. I, you know, my life revolved around being in bed and going to doctor's appointments, period, end of sentence. You know, I, I couldn't take care of anything else besides myself. And I could barely do that. I certainly couldn't take care of my house or my husband or any family members. It was all I could do to just get out of bed and to go to doctor's appointments. My body was in constant chaos. At one point I was diagnosed with PTSD. I had so much anxiety and stress. I had had a heart attack when I was 38 and it had caused a lot of damage to my heart. And really after that is when so much anxiety and stress came in even more than before. And you know, it, <laughs> I really, was undergoing so many crazy symptoms, things doctors did not understand. Even the Lyme specialists were like, we don't know, you know? <laughs> yeah, like what, like what things specifically? Um, my heart would race and it would go into palpitations. It would skip beats. Um, and I had seen cardiologists for years and years and years and they couldn't come up with an answer. Um, I had pain all throughout my entire body constantly through my bones, through my muscles, you know, through my neck, through my head. If you looked at me, I, my shoulders were up here and I was, ew, you could tell I was just in stress and pain. Wow. I was barely walking. Um, I was barely moving, you know, it, and anxiety. <laughs> I couldn't even think straight. It, it just was constant. Okay. And this was for how long a period of time? Um, those symptoms about 10 years, I had trouble breathing. I was on um, uh, nebulizers, inhalers. Um, you know, I had so much constriction in my lungs. I had microplasma and I had mold in my lungs. So it was a struggle just to even be able to breathe. This is interesting because in my history working as an ER doctor, there are a lot of people I would see just like that coming in for the acute thing, whether it's severe pain or you know, their bowels are obstructed now or uh, they need a nebulizer treatment because they're not oxygenating. Right. I could see, well, there's like 10 layers of stuff that's yeah. really going on for this person. 
I can open up their airway, which is an awesome use of allopathic medicine. That's why I went into ER. Let's get you breathing. But hey, here's this whole massive heap of what's not being looked at, what's not typically understood in the conventional system, that I understood how much the emotional system plays into what's getting created physically with all that inflammation and all that pain and all that digestive shutdown. Um, and there's a lot, a lot of medical science to really well understand this. It just hasn't made its way into the mainstream model or the, the conventional model of the allopathic, um, which the allopathic is primarily pharmaceutical model. And it's based on the idea that something outside allo other is needed to correct what's going on in my body. Um, we now know that that's a very, very limited model, but you know, I can really have a lot of compassion for where you were and how a conventional doctor would have looked at that picture and said, Oh, well, Here's your skin rash. Let's put steroids on it. Here's your lung condition. Let's open you up with nebulizers. Here's what's going on in your GI system. Let's, you know, give you this um, omeprazole or, you know, a, a proton pump inhibitor, antacid. All of these are seen as separate. And then the objective is to suppress. Let's turn off this symptom and turn off that symptom. But when we actually look at the whole thing, the whole picture all together from a very open standpoint, we can begin to look at like, wait a minute, where does this body need to be either nurtured and fed a certain way or remove a certain piece of the puzzle that's a stressor so everything can unlock and unwind and rearrange itself. The other thing, Kimberly, that's really um, notable about how you're telling your story that I think is pretty universal is there's always this, this point. See, it's a, a shift in consciousness. There's this point of X, Y, and Z happened. I did this, I did this, I did that. Then there's like a pause for what is the shift. You know, it, it's either then it got so bad, you know, either, you know, you lost uh, a really close relationship or something really meaningful to, to the person. Uh, it creates a, a shift and an opening in a certain way. And for you, it was like, I let everything go. I sat on the beach. The, you know, obviously, does that solve all the problems of the world? Well, it creates a shift in consciousness. Right. It's right. an opening to allow a new perception, a new clarity, a new perspective in not because we're like, all right, let me go sit on that beach and make this thing happen, but because we let go. And when right. we let go of what we're holding, we have space to receive something new. And I've pretty much seen this universally in the individuals who've really had um, a huge shift in the, the physical illness, that there's a moment where they have a shift in consciousness. Mm -hmm. And I'm really interested to hear like what was created from that because you know, either we see things a different way or something we didn't even know about before all of a sudden is like, ding, 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 ding. Oh, that really resonates. And we're able to choose from a deeper space. Yes, absolutely. And um, it really was clarity, clarity that I couldn't hear through the, the stress and the chaos and the anxiety prior to that. You know, I, I just, I, I was trying, but I could not hear it. Um, so being at that space and now I know so much about grounding, you know, and that was a big part of it. And I was receiving, um, a space of healing, even just in that relaxed space of, of sitting on the beach and doing nothing else than maybe just imagining my healthy self, imagining may, maybe being able to be more flexible or running or doing yoga or something like that. And it was just in that space. Um, and I did a lot of meditation. I did a lot of stretching and just enjoying my life because I had not enjoyed my life in so long. And, how, and how were you able to access that? Like when people are in pain, they're like, yeah, that sounds well and good. I'm in too much pain. I can't yeah. find any joy. What, where were you able to actually allow something new in? Because I could see something different for myself. I had a realization that I was already whole. There was a part of me that was already whole and complete. There was a part of me that didn't need all that fixing and, and effort that I was putting into my health. 
And I was able to come into a space of receiving rather than fighting against because I had my miss fix it hat on, right? I was going to fix it. I was going to clear that thing out of my system. You know, it was a very masculine, aggressive. And that's the, really the perspective and the approach yes. in the allopathic model is like, oh, you got this thing. Boom, we're going to fix this. Boom, we're going to fix that. And that's very limited. It's great for ER and surgery and right. certain instances. It's, it's incredibly limited yeah. for the chronic picture. Yes. Yes. And that was the same attitude I had, you know, um, we're just going to blow this thing out of the water. Let's get rid of these things. And it doesn't work because you think you're fighting against the organism, the bacteria, the lime, the mold, whatever it is, but you're fighting against your beautiful body <laughs> and your body has an amazing capacity to heal. Amazing. This is, this is a big shift in perspective too, is, especially in what we're in globally in the narrative of we've got to fight, we've got to fight. And if you look at, okay, what is that creating? Is that creating prosperity? Is that creating well-being? Um, is it even creating survival, which is what it's touted to, you know, hey, we may not be thriving, but at least we survive. Is that actually creating enhanced survival and it's not creating any of the above? So for me, the awareness practice is always the foundation uh, for the Embracing Health program, which you've participated in. For, for all the work I do is it's not about right and wrong. Should I do this? Should I do that? Which is more the fix it, scattered, schizophrenic state. It's more of the receptive awareness of what is this creating? Right. What is it creating to think I have this thing I've got to attack and fight? What is it creating to believe I'm not safe? I'm not okay. I've got to <gasps> gear up and fend for myself. What is it creating to be on the never ending search because I'm not whole? Mm -hmm. And then you look and, you know, the longer you stay in that journey, the more clarity you get that it isn't going to create what you actually really want, which is well-being and vitality and freedom. Yes. And then that's when that shift comes for so many people that they open to something new. We've got to first have the insight of where we are and what that's creating, which for me is awareness. And that's why it's so powerful to just, do that pause on the beach. It was funny because mine was like on a beach as well when I had that severe autoimmune disease. And then the doctors told me, you've got blah, 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 blah syndrome. And I was like, wait a minute, this is a nightmare. And I went back to school up in Maine and took a walk on the beach with myself and had that same conversation. Like, all right, Kim, it's, it's you and you. What are we actually doing here? Is this actually true for us? Is the fight really our journey? And it was a huge pivotal moment um, where, it, it, well, I think it was really insightful that you even began to see, is this true? I've got to fight the bacteria with everything I've got. Is this actually about an invader I've got to fight? Or is there something else happening here? And we can zoom out and sort of see the bigger picture. And I think it's really powerful that you even were able to, to allow that. Right. Because when we're in the fight and we've seen scientifically, our brain <laughs> narrows down single minded focus, sympathetic nervous system. We're only seeing that one thing run from the tiger. Would you say there's any insight in what allowed you to have that pause? Well, I think for me and a lot of other people, it's desperation. <laughs> when you have really reached the bottom of the barrel and you don't think there's any other answers. And I know if I would have continued on that trajectory, I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be on this. So it's like surrender. The desperation yes. led you to surrender what you were yes. doing. Yes. Yes. Okay. Surrender. And I would say it took me several years to get to that place to not fight against. That wasn't immediate. That because I approached my healing the same way with that <laughs> let's fix it kind of energy, seeing all the energy professionals and healers and things like that. And it was like, let's clear this. I notice this now. I don't want this. And I was recognizing how a lot of the traumas and a lot of the unresolved issues and the emotional stuff I hadn't dealt with. And I just, you know, I hadn't dealt with so many things. Yes. And those things had all manifested into physical things for me. Yes. It's a good point because sometimes when people hear, wait, you're saying this is emotional, so it's not physical. Yes, it is. It's physical. I don't have emotional. 99% of the people who come 
to the work I'm doing aren't aware of any of the emotional energy that's being carried in their physical body at all. So the, in this, even someone saying here, I'm, I'm just had a hysterectomy, I'm doing very well, but then there's been this um, sleep problem, I'm awake, I can't catch my breath, my heart is racing. Um, am I going through PTSD? And you're really speaking to that. It's like when yes. the body goes through a major stressor, which a hysterectomy is certainly a major, whoa, we're getting rearranged here. Um, a lot of these things will surface to be released. The yes. more energies we're carrying, the less circuitry is available for basic housekeeping, cleaning, you know, releasing waste, detoxification, um, you know, rebuilding the body and vitality, staying youthful, all that tons of energy circuitry is going into like, oh, run from the dragon, run from the dragon. Don't do that mistake again. Oh, logging in the past um, threats and making sure I control the situation. This is when we see uh, what we've stored, what we've suppressed that's now coming up, you go through a surgery and your body's like, well, we got to recover, restore, rearrange. There's a lot that the body can release in that process. And if you make space for that, it will do the rearrangement. But if we try to treat it, fix it, suppress it, therapize it, it does exactly the opposite. Yeah. So Kimberly, let's go from there. So you were more into this space of clarity through that kind of like, whoa, I'm desperate. All I can do is surrender. What happened next? And how did you end up finding this work? Um, I, I really started studying mind-body medicine and I started really um, looking into tapping. Um, that was something I was really drawn to. I didn't know a lot about it, but I, I was really drawn to EFT. Um, so I watched uh, Tapping Summit for the first time. That that was probably, I don't know, six or seven years ago. And you were on there. <laughs> and you were saying some things that were very interesting to me. And I thought, hmm, that's interesting and kind of put a pin in it. But I couldn't really receive it at the time because I was still in such a fight mode. Because I was still approaching my healing in the same way, you know, going to all those healers with that, you know, let's clear this, let, let's heal this. So it, it was a period of time. And then the next year I heard you on the summit and I was doing lots of tapping. My PTSD had cleared and, you know, I was feeling so much more peace. I was healing a lot of traumas and um, a lot of those bottled up emotions and stuffed things I was allowing to come to the surface. And I, I watched you again on the summit. And I'm like, yeah, she, she has something interesting here. So I started watching your videos on YouTube and some of them I had to watch dozens of times. And I just, you know, over and over. And each time I watch it, I pick up something different that I hadn't seen before. And then I, I started taking your um, mind body toolkit. Um, that was the first thing that I did was that course. And then I, I think it was about a year later, I took Embracing Health, um, that course, um, Ignite Your Light, um, Be the Medicine is the one that I'm in now. And, you know, it has really opened me up to a place of surrender and allowance and embracing because all these things I was trying to suppress and to clear and to get rid of were beautiful messages from my body beautiful messages. And when I was able to come to the space of embracing all those parts of me that were suffering, that were stuck in a space of, of pain and anxiety and stress, um, when I was able to embrace all of that and allow it is when true healing began to happen. And really, out of much faster speed, I would say, and with much more grace and ease than the fighting <laughs> and the fixing. Yeah, you're choosing from a different place, choosing what feeds and nurtures me versus choosing what's going to help me outrun the tiger, what's going to help this thing go away. I think that's the, the big pinnacle moment because it's not about you have to do this course, you have to do this thing. It's like um, anything we choose as a way of nurturing our wholeness as I, it necessitates that I remember that I am whole, 
and that I can access that more fully and then choose the things that are supportive of that. If I'm in a foundation, I, I just had a session with a client and some of the choices she's making, it helped her see like, well, why would you choose that? And it was because I'm so scared. Well, what, what, what's under that? What are you afraid of? Because I don't feel supported. I'm not taking care of, I'm on my own. It's me and me. There aren't resources for me. You know, that I'm limited. I'm in lack. I'm powerless. Mm -hmm. So when we look at the foundation of I'm limited, I'm powerless, I'm, I'm on my own, life's not on my side. And you can look at that and go, okay, is this true? Because to this small self, it is true. And then you will live it as such. You'll live it as your reality and your body will listen. Your cells are listening to the program. But if we look at that foundation and say, wait a minute, is that really my truth? Is What if, what if the opposite is true? What if I am whole and I'm maybe not experiencing that, but I could let more of it in somehow, some way, if I slow, if I soften, if I surrender? That's how a new consciousness gets integrated into the system. That's how a, a new program rearranges our hormones, our nervous system, our GI system in a new pattern, in a new arrangement, and lets the old pattern go. We've got to look, wait, is this actually true? What if the opposite were true? What if I am whole? What if there are resources for me? What if this is happening for my benefit? And uh, that's what allows the, that new consciousness to integrate cellularly and literally create new neural networks, new hormones being secreted, new, even like strengthening the gut lining and tightening up those cell junctions, um, the tight junctions that make the whole difference from like autoimmune disease, leaky gut, um, inflammatory bowel disease to perfectly healthy, strong, energized. Mm -hmm. um, so, so what would you say to someone? Cause I, what I want to do in this series is help people um, understand that the commitment to that deeper truth of maybe I am whole, maybe there is more possible can be a little rocky or uncertain, or we kind of like doubt comes in or, well, everyone else is telling me no way this will never happen for you. Even the doctor is telling me that's impossible, but there's this whisper how do we let that be stronger than what we see or what's around us? And my answer would be trust your heart. Trust what comes up within you as truth. Because I, I was told that I'd have these things for the rest of my life, that, you know, they would be part of my life. And they are no longer. I am healthy and well. Those things are gone. I'm not in I'm just saying, why is, did Kimberly have to take so many courses before she actually started healing? So um, I, I would definitely want you to speak to that because I'm sure that wasn't the case. No, no, that wasn't the case at all. And, you know, my healing journey began that moment that I said, I'm taking my power back because Dr. Kim, so many things cleared out of my system at that moment. My frequency changed. I was in a different paradigm than what I had been in before. So at that moment, my healing began. Now, when I went through some of these courses, what allowed was for deeper layers to come forth. And sometimes there were other layers of maybe a different bacteria or something that would come out. And to be quite honest, sometimes you don't always feel great when that's happening. And it was just a reminder. This is just temporary. It's clearing out. It, this it's is a good thing to remember that in the conventional system, when symptoms intensify, it's always seen as a wrongness. You're getting, quote, worse. And in what I've seen in like conscious medicine is very, very often as you're healing, you will feel um, densities come up. You'll feel maybe a little heavier or you'll feel a little the symptoms may reemerge as it's moving through. This is very, very common, not just in my medical practice, but for many, many other doctors and practitioners I've worked with who were more in the healing art versus the like suppress your symptom space, they will say the same thing that the body is clearing through and it will a lot of times intensify as you are healing, as you're actually improving, but it won't feel like what you're taught it's supposed to feel like. Right. And that's very true. Sometimes you don't always feel great, but it's that constant reminder to, for myself, it was, I am healing. This is just temporary. I'm already whole. This is a done deal. I am moving forward no matter how I feel at this moment. And it was just that reminder. 
And, and Malavika is saying um, it's difficult to be mindful when you're in pain. The awareness somehow amplifies the pain in that moment. It's kind of speaking to what we're actually saying is when I do get present and I'm no longer in suppression, things can intensify. Mm -hmm. How do I meet that moment to let it continue and move out, which is what it's trying to do and why it's coming up instead of going back to like, oh no, that must be wrong. I must be doing it wrong and going back into suppression. For myself, it was realizing that there was a, a younger piece of me holding that pain, that trauma, and having that deep love and compassion for those pieces of me that were still experiencing that. So even though that pain may intensify, realize that there's still a piece of you that needs that love and compassion and support and knowing that you're there with that piece. It's what's coming up to be embraced, yes. not the wrongness yes. to be judged or fixed or suppressed. For sure. Yes, absolutely. Which is why actually when I created the, the program to work with individuals live, it's called embracing health, not fix your health and let's manage this for once and for all or, you know, suppress your symptoms so you never have to face this again. It's actually about embracing all of what you are so that these parts return to wholeness and what isn't true for you dissolves. What is true is strengthened. Um, yeah, Regina says, is that a healing crisis? It's only a crisis to the degree that we resist it. And that creates more inflammation and the body can't detoxify it as easily. So it can turn into like a really overwhelming situation. That happens a lot when people are, you know, for example, you, you kill all the bugs at once and then you're like, oh, I've got this like immune reaction against the, the products of that breakdown. And it can be really overwhelming like everything else to the degree that we're not willing to uh, access the higher state that lets the body detoxify, that lets the body heal itself, that lets the body clear and rebalance. So it's always a matter of, um, do I resist this or do I find ways to embrace and nurture myself through this? I wanna ask also, Regina said, what about if it does feel true to you? And I think what she's speaking about is you know, the, the lie, right? You're limited. You'll never make it. You're, you're not okay. You've got to keep working hard. Or some people have in their belief system, I've actually heard them say like, well, but the older I get, the harder I have to work at it. I mean, that, I'm just going to have to work harder at my health, the older I get. And I'm like, whoa, all these delusions we've believed about the body, that the body is this like ever decaying being that we have to like work harder and harder because like aging is this deceleration. It's not true. There are many, many cultures that don't buy into any of this and they live very long, fruitful, happy lives, many decades longer than we're doing in a very, very healthy state. But what if, um, I think what she's saying is like, what if you do believe that, uh, you, hey, it is true. I have some things I would speak to that, but why don't you share a little your thoughts on that, Kimberly? That I'm not sure. I'm sure you probably met that moment where you're like, oh, I, I, I believe it. I can't heal. The doctor must be right. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. And, and I did believe, <laughs> I did believe them for many years <laughs> that I was sick, that, you know, I had tried all the treatments. They didn't know what else to do. You know, I was to the point where they were going to put a port into me and do intravenous antibiotics on, you know, continual basis. That was the point where I said, no, because there was a piece of me that knew that I had to trust myself. And I knew better than anybody with a huge title behind their name and all the experience in the world. I knew my body better than them. And that was one of the first realizations that, that I could trust my intuition. And I said no to that. And they're like, we don't know what else to do for you. And I'm like, okay, okay. And that's when I decided to take my power back. I, I had reached. It's a point. It's a point we get to when buying that limitation is heavier than just meeting our truth. Mm -hmm. Like for me, it was the same thing where I, I kept buying into it until it got so big that I was like, this can't be my truth. This can't be my path because it felt so heavy and so dense that I just realized like, this is a big lie. My body's telling me something higher. 
Mm -hmm. um, yes, Miriam, when things get worse, quote unquote, worse or more intense, this also applies to emotions coming up. Those densities are actually physical crystallized densities in the body. When we transition to a higher state, a higher frequency, greater health, greater prosperity, abundance, they literally dissolve out of the cells. The cells know how to let go of the old programming and what we've like stored, stored away the, the fear, stored away the trauma, stored away the um, any of those oppressive experiences we may have been through. The cells know how to release that and then it will actually come up as it's moving out. Um, and someone also asked, I mean, I'm in the process of being diagnosed with a genetic syndrome. Would this healing method work for this too? This is an important point I wanted to make with this series, um, especially with um, Angelique, which was maybe like two or three months ago, I interviewed her. She had been diagnosed with Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, which is a connective tissue genetic disorder where the tissue is like super, super stretchy. You'll see in the medical textbook, the guy's like, pulling his skin all the way out here. The skin is so stretchy and elastic and their joints will be like hyper, hyper flexible. But what happens is a lot of subluxations, a lot of dislocations, a lot of chronic pain and a lot of other chronic illnesses that go along with this. So hers was a very physical, genetic, understood syndrome. She was in the wheelchair. She had an amazing journey with this and is no longer in the wheelchair. She's no longer having chronic severe pain, going to the chiropractor three weeks, um, constantly dislocating. Her physical structure responded to this work. She had been in the Embracing Health program as well. And I mean, she came forward and shared this testimonial that was like, it gave me goosebumps and was so powerful. So I asked her to share. That's a video that's in, uh, in actually in the Mind Body TV series as well as it's on my YouTube channel. Uh, but there are ways we've seen that very, very structural, genetic, physically understood illness. And, you know, for yourself, Kimberly, they find the Lyme disease, like, well, we got these spirochetes, they find Epstein-Barr virus, here's this virus. So there are physical things going on, but we've seen scientifically that your physical body is constantly responding to the energies, the emotions, the consciousness, the belief systems and assumptions that you're in. Yes, and I completely believe in epigenetics and how powerful we can turn off those signals on our cells and turn them on. So it's, you know, your thoughts, your beliefs that can turn those things off and on. So I had a lot of MTHFR pathway, I'm gonna call them genetic glitches, okay? Where um, I had histamine intolerance, I couldn't absorb B vitamins correctly. You know, I had a lot of things dealing with the brain that were not working properly um, with melatonin and with sleep. And there were a lot of things that you could look at scientifically and say, yeah, this could explain why she's at where she's at. Right. And I would say 98 percent of those things have healed. I don't have a histamine intolerance anymore. I can eat whatever I'd like to. My gut has completely healed. Um, I don't have any of those issues that I had anymore, you know, yes. And I think connection and being sourced and allowance is a big part of that genetic healing. At least it was for myself. It's a powerful thing to see and hear someone's story of this. Um, and it's also powerful to see that we have lots and lots of research to understand how the body heals itself. People are asking, can this help people who've had a car accident or a severe concussion? Um, yes. And people are asking other questions, you know, but the reality is um, everything, every illness we've ever known, every trauma we've ever seen, every condition in the body, genetically, physically, has been shown to respond to this guiding principle, has yes. been shown to respond and shift into a higher state of higher function, higher cleansing out of waste products, higher um, even the connective tissue to develop more plasticity so it can rearrange and align in a more harmonious, healthy way. Um, when we come into, you could think of it as a higher vibration, a higher consciousness, um, embracing more willingness to um, have compassion for ourselves, 
And we do this in the work in very specific ways. So you can have like a general, okay, I'll have more compassion for myself. Or we can dig up the very, very specific nuggets that are in your system where you tucked it away and you were not willing to go there and you were not willing to embrace this and you specifically shoved it down and actually move the freaking boulder of what's creating the greatest density in your system. What, one of the uh, things I shared in the Embracing Health was my favorite um, approach by a, an older osteopath like, like 100 years ago, many maybe 60 years ago, um, where they said that the greatest physician is the one who will look at the whole picture and evaluate by whatever means and remove by whatever means those pieces creating the most limitation. So if something in your system is creating the most limitation and it's on like a emotional level, but it's barring up the whole system so you can't clear a virus and you can't cure bacteria and you can't rearrange the genetic mutations to get the connective tissue functioning, and I'm not going to even look at that physical stuff. I'm going to remove the massive boulder that's hanging up all your circuitry and occupying it over here so you can't heal that. And let's release that. And so developing the sensitivity, which many people in this community are highly sensitive, empathic, you have the ability to see these things and to know things and to be aware of things um, in a much deeper way. That's a gift that I, I can actually see, whoa, this is more related to a relationship. This is more related to um, inflammation in your system. This is more related to um, something that happened in your past when you were very young and um, be able to move those obstructions very specifically so that your body's healing mechanism can kick in and unwind and rearrange the universe of you. That's really where the power is. I, when I first started practicing osteopathic medicine, I saw some of my mentors do these amazing things and make these diagnoses in the bodies like, whoa, you had this trauma when you were 13 years old and here's the emotions associated with it. Um, I think Kimberly just got knocked off, but we'll hopefully come back in. And they would call it out very explicitly and that person would just start crying. Whoa, that's exactly what happened when I was 13 years old and this incident with my father and they'd have this massive emotional release as he released the physical trauma um, and the body would heal. So that was really fascinating to me. Like, whoa, how did he tap into that awareness? How did he tap into this happening in the body and that that was stored in the body? So I've developed, um, I've developed that myself. Once you see it's possible, it was like, I want to do that. How do I develop that? Um, let me see if we've got Kimberly back. Sorry about that. As a medical doctor, who cannot help patients who expect me to fix them. I realize hearing you that I, as a patient with chronic fatigue syndrome, arthritis, etc., cetera, hand, hand over my power to the doctors and healers I consult and hope they'll fix me rather than to reclaim my power to heal. Thank you. It's, it's beautiful because then I can consult the doctor in a very different alignment. We've been established in a hierarchy where the doctor is supposed to know and the doctor has the power and you don't which is a total lie. And the more we live a lie, the more we experience the limitation because it's not true. And it's not true from the doctor's end who are going to be like exhausted and feel like a martyr. And it's never enough. You couldn't pay me enough to operate in that system because it's so depleting. And the patient suffers because they're disempowered that even if they do get the hit, they have to keep going back for more and it's going to create more toxicity every time. So how do we actually meet in an alignment of, I honor the wisdom in me. Here she's back. Sorry about okay. that. Okay, you're back. <laughs> so, so I was saying, how do we meet in a new alignment out of the hierarchy in our power and we can still receive resources. There's amazing people doing medicine or other healing work, but to meet them from, all right, I, I'm accessing my wholeness let's use this modality to assist that, or let's use this modality to assist the physical stuff going on while I'm also doing this and, and meet from wholeness to wholeness. And then the, the expert, the doctor, the healer can also be in their human form of like, I'm opening and looking and getting curious. I don't have all the answers, but I will assist you in accessing the truth in you. I will assist you in accessing the wholeness in you. So now as a practitioner, I am 
I mean, it was a massive difference from like the heavy lifting I thought I needed to do to like help people to the very lightness, effortlessness work I'm doing to assist people to embrace health. That health is already within them. That wisdom is already within them. And that infinite uh, source they connect with through this work does the healing for us. Not me fixing your liver, fixing your kidney, fixing your chronic fatigue syndrome. It's totally beyond that because this source that um, allows that acceleration allows the healing of everything that we've ever seen. Um, so Kimberly, let's complete. I just want to see, there's like a few more people are really, really appreciating you. I, I want to just shout out for that. And I am really glad to hear that. And I want to give a special hello to my, my Gemma, my daughter who is here today. I always love having her. Um, people are talking about EFT helped me so much. Congrats. I'm so happy for you, Kimberly. Are the videos provided in the Embracing Health program like the Chronic Fatigue program? Yes, 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 yes. And they kind of bring us to that next dimension of empowerment and how we navigate our own system and how, you know, it's great to have me um, be an example of truth and wisdom, but it's even more powerful for you to access it within yourself and learn this embodiment within yourself and learn the integration within yourself. And there's, um, I'll just speak briefly on the Embracing Health program. We start in June. It's a live program where we work together through the year. Uh, there are Zoom calls we do each month. And then there's a Facebook group where I'll interact with you each week to kind of like assist you in embodying this truth. Because in some level we know, yes, I, I, I have access to power, but I'm not really sure. I mean, what about how I feel about this? And like we get in the mind. So to just like anchor into the truth that you already are, um, it really assists you through that process. And then there's a whole video series where I did right up front these welcome videos that go much deeper into what I'm saying and navigating the internal space of power um, and, and navigating through like beyond the mind and beyond the belief systems. And then there's also the mind body mastery program, which are some short videos that are that are in there to help you work with these tools. Um, and it's at drkimd.com forward slash health. If you would like to check out the program, I'm going to put it in here, drkimd.com forward slash health um, to get a little more feel of what this work is. Um, yeah, because the densities are going to be so big to the degree we live in that limited mind, that limited self. I'm a physical being. I'm solid. I'm separate. You, you can't not experience anxiety and limitation on a daily basis. Um, awesome. 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 <laughs> Embracing hell totally rocks. Yeah, if any of you guys have been in the program, I would love to hear your thoughts on what you would have to say to someone considering this work, not just the program or my work, but someone considering like taking more seriously that whisper inside that says there's something higher possible for you. Um, and what it's been like you for you to embark on that journey and begin to listen that, whoa, lots of stuff can come up to move out. Um, that might be intense. How do I stay in the knowing? So I let that process complete which is really what the program is designed around. Uh, instead of just kind of trying to put the lid back on and go back into the cave, how to deal with anxiety, helpless emotions, especially happening around India. Kimberly, will you speak to this a little with like what your experience was in the program, um, being held in that, in that um, space of compassion, especially when really intense things came up for you with anxiety, helplessness, all the remnants of stuff moving out. I, I really believe the space, Dr. Kim, that you hold for us and the level of consciousness that you're at is incredibly healing just to be in that space. Um, knowing that you're seen, that you're heard, that they're, you're not alone, that you're connected to not only those people in the group, but to every other person on this planet. And all things are possible when we can come into that connection and to, into that source. 
and into that allowance and knowing. Um, when those difficult things came up, I felt like I had the support that I needed to be able to move through those, that I could ask the questions on the Facebook um, private um, page, that um, I could, in, in a live or it, on a Zoom call, ask you questions directly, um, and all other people that are going through something very, very similar you know, can relate to what you're going through. You don't feel so iso isolated and alone. So it does offer that connection and support that I desperately needed. I really was was needing that in myself. And, and especially for this person in the situation in India, uh, where there's so much oppression, decisions being made for you, you're not allowed to think independently, let alone cho choose independently. Um, these are circumstances that are coming up specifically to bring up these densities of where we've concluded I'm going to defer to the authority. I, I don't know. I'm going to defer outside of me. The answer is outside of me. Let me keep looking. And I'm not saying for you individually, but for us as a collective, this is really where humanity has been residing. So there are opportunities for us to each take a stand for, is that true for me? Am I weak and powerless and I need people to tell me what to do? Or am I powerful and I can allow a resolution in my circumstances by embracing more compassion for myself and for what's arising instead of making it wrong and trying to suppress it? So it's it's a really a new way of being. We are each individually and all collectively being invited into. Will I react and press against what I think is unfair and I need to fight against this? Or will I embrace what it's bringing up in me with compassion so I have more power and can take action that really matters? This is where we're really creating a global shift because there are many, um, even people who would identify themselves as activists and they're gonna you know, fight this cause or go for that cause, but they're actually depleting their power because they haven't met the density that it brings up in them to have this oppression going on, to have this um, fight, war, struggle, powerlessness. When we meet the spaces in ourselves, we access infinite power. So every action we take has unbelievable consequences. So I would say this is a really important message, not only if we're struggling with an illness, but it, we're struggling with any circumstance that brings up that powerlessness and has it be reflected in our environment like, well, I'm playing it out like it's really true. They are oppressing me. I don't have power over them. And begin to question that. Where does my power actually come from? What would it take for me to access it more fully? Because even something as simple as asking those questions allows a shift in our consciousness. So you, the solution can come in. You know, Einstein said that the solutions do not exist at the level of consciousness where the problems reside. So this program, what, what I'm doing in my work and in the Embracing Health program, or anything you're doing individually to, to cultivate this, is what creates a shift in consciousness. So you can begin to perceive the solution. So you can begin to be and embody the solution. Um, and I want to look at this one more piece someone's asking, Stella, how long should it take for the emotions to come up and release? I've had some anxiety intensify for days. I feel like I'm moving through it. And someone also asked, I don't know where it went. How long did it take for you to release it? I'm aiming to release any ideas of time, but my impatience sets in or I question if maybe I need to do more. One of the awareness I've had is that um, even the little bits of light that start to come in from the very beginning, like you said, just choosing a new path, just choosing to sign up for a course that resonated with that heart space or um, making a, a choice would allow an acceleration. So it wasn't about okay, it was eight months later before my fibromyalgia resolved. There's actually something that happens immediately as well. W would you say that was true for you or what was your journey with that? Um, I would say, yes, I did feel a speeding up of some of the healing, but I had already experienced a great amount of healing before I even started the Embracing Health. It was just those last couple layers. And <laughs> as far as the emotional things, more layers than I could ever imagine. <laughs> layers and layers and layers of things and, and something you thought you dealt with. Oh, here's another aspect or another layer of it coming back up. But um, I'm entirely grateful for those things to be able to 
find resolution, to find peace with those, to address them, and um, now have them released from, excuse me, from my system completely. So for that, I'm really grateful. And I did, if we have a moment, I did want to yeah. speak to the person that asked about the car accident. Um, I had been in multiple car accidents and I had had a lot of trauma within the car itself. And I wasn't able to drive for 15 years. Um, I was constantly dizzy. I couldn't judge space. Um, I didn't have any awareness. Uh, there was no way I could have possibly driven. And those things have all healed. In fact, I've been able to drive for about four years now. And so, yes, when when you're willing to unwind those and and those stuffed emotions, the body can completely heal that. Yes, absolutely. I'm going to share the video with Angelique because people are mentioning that who had a connective genetic connective tissue genetic disorder as well. Um, so the link is here for you guys. Um, so, so Kimberly, what uh, would you, what else would you share or leave people with, especially from the space of, um, I think like the deep compassion that we really do need to embody to let all of this move through. Cause there are some real severe densities, especially people who may be in doubt or fear, or I've done this, this didn't work, that didn't work. Or, um, you know, in that kind of space. When you can meet yourself at, in those deep spaces with a space of love and compassion, it shifts everything. It really does shift. And healing is available to you at this very moment. And all things are possible. All things can absolutely heal. Our body has an amazing capacity to heal. The more that we come into allowance, and surrender of what is. I'm gonna share also from Ruth. She said, the Embracing Health program is transforming my life. It's been a gentle year long awakening, teaching me to surrender and allow emotions and physical symptoms to be felt and released. This is allowing me to love and nurture myself and life in a new way. I know I'll carry on improving physically and emotionally is I have a new relationship with myself, my body, and my life. Mm -hmm. And you know, Karen is asking, how does multiple sclerosis fit into this? Mm -hmm. Which brings up another interview I had with um, uh, Anita um, Griffith, who had severe mm -hmm. MS, was told yeah. she has six months to live, you yeah. know, in the bed, not even like a, a wheelchair. Uh, in, in the bed, they wheeled a, a hospital bed into the dining room and cleared out her house you know, this was like her hospice and she is very much alive and well walking and, you know, sharing her story. And um, do you want to speak a little bit to what someone might? Sure. Think Absolutely. Of? And that was one of the things I was diagnosed with. You know, I went to three different neurologists and um, <laughs> yes, they, they diagnosed me with um, MS and I did a spinal tab. I did um, MRIs, CAT scans, you name it. And I did all the testing and that was the decision they came up with was the neurologist said that, yes, you do have MS. And so I did injections, intramuscular injections every day for um, 10 months. I felt horrible on them. My face blew up like a balloon. I started growing hair all over my body. Uh, and I kept going back to the neurologist. I said, you know, this is not helping me to feel better. I know that you're, the reason for this injection is so new, new lesions do not happen. I had, I had a cyst and a lesion in my brain. Um, but it's making me feel terrible and I'm not feeling any better. And I would really like to stop this injection. And, you know, no. No, no, that is not in your best interest to do that. So I went to UCSF to um, um, in San Francisco and they have a whole MS clinic there. And I sat <laughs> before somebody that just does MS research and he told me, no, you do not have MS and you should have never been on those injections to begin with. So then it was like, okay, how do I get this toxic stuff out of my system? You know, and it it just kind of follows through. And I had asked him, 
what is the, if I do not have MS, what is the cause of the cystin lesion in my brain? I said, if, if this is what you research, this is what you study, what is the cause of this? And he says, my best guess is a virus that could have possibly caused it. And he wanted to give me all kinds of medication for the dizziness because he was sick, right? <laughs> Throwing all these things at me. And I'm like, nope, nope, nope. I'll get to the source of it. And um, so we, we all train to look for our pet lesion. Here's the way I treat. Let me look right. for where that's lying in the system and obliterate that or someone right. else it's structurally. And they're like, oh, it's because your, your uh, you know, joints are thrown off. Let's realign the joints, which can all be beneficial in different ways. But we may not be seeing the whole and not be seeing what, what else is going on. Right. Right. So I, I, I then went through a, a period of detox uh, through a homeopathic um, medication to try to desensitize myself to that system. And it had destroyed my endocrine system and my endocrine system has completely healed. Um, you know, I do not have MS. I completely, I, I was only able to walk such short distance. And now I'm able to walk around a marina that is by our house four miles every day. You know, I have been given such a gift and the same is available to you is what I would say. <laughs> yes. Well, and someone here is also saying like when a layer comes up, how do you process it? And and also we had how, how to feel vibrantly light when there's pain physically. I think these are really valid questions to speak to. Yeah. Um, so, so what would you say? Cause it, that's a really, this space we go into is like, how do I even begin to make space for this and let this move through? Breath work is a biggie for me doing different kinds of breath work and, um, connecting with my inner self, connecting with that younger self. And when you're having a lot of pain, tapping can be a great way Yes, even though I have so much pain and I can't even focus and I just want it to go away, but I love and accept those parts of me that are still suffering, you know, and tapping is a great way to be able to calm the system down, to be able to get into a place of clarity as to why it's actually there. And this wonderful message from your body is not something to be suppressed or, or medicated. It's a message. Pay attention. Pay attention. <laughs> it's a great point. Anything we do to embrace what's happening more fully, what's coming up, anything we do to embrace it more fully is exactly what lets it dissolve and move through. Um, we have also a question about, I just started the chronic fatigue program. How big is the overlap? Um, so if that resonates with you, the Embracing Health program goes deeper and we're working together through the year. Um, so we'll go deeper into the work. So I would just say, it isn't that you need more. You um, receive the chronic fatigue program. That's the home study program we did. Um, that you can let this integration happen there. If it does feel like, oh yeah, I'm going to keep moving this direction. Anything that assists you in embracing what's moving through is going to assist you in healing and awakening awakening to abundance, fluidity, vitality, you know, living beyond the, the, the limited and actually living into the vibrance, not just physically, but in every level with your money, with your relationships. In fact, do you want to speak a little bit to that, Kimberly, too? Because um, some people have even said about my work, like, wow, this applies to so much more. Um, why she's just applying it to the, the physical illness. This actually applies to so many more things. And We've had universally people come through the program to say, like, I had all kinds of changes in all my relationships for, for the better. There's more love and acceptance and joy. There's unbelievable changes in my money where money now comes through effortlessly. It's not this struggle of separation. What did you experience with that? Yes. And I would definitely consider healing as a holistic picture, looking at all the pieces, not just the physical body. And yes, those are all pieces that affect us and affect our physical bodies, these struggles, these lacks um, that we consider ourselves less than. And it does affect your money. It does affect your, your emotions. It does affect your spirituality. It does affect your energy. It does affect your relationships. It affects every part. And the more 
healing that I've done and the more allowance and embracing that I've done of, of all of that, I have seen a tremendous shift in my entire life, not just my physical body, but my sense of self, my level of peace, which is such a gift. Oh my Lord, thank you for peace. <laughs> um, for not struggling with money. Even throughout this pandemic, we have had an abundance of work come through with my husband's business. Still, he is incredibly, incredibly busy. And, and when things weren't coming through for other people, we were in abundance helping them out. And for that, I'm incredibly grateful for. And for relationships, yes, I would say most of my marriage, I was sick and it was a challenge. It was, it was a definite challenge. And then when I started feeling better, my husband started um, losing some family members that passed on and he was going through a lot of challenge also. So there was a lot of struggle with our relationships. And I can say from the bottom of my heart that we are more connected and more in support of each other than we've ever been. And we've been married for 21 years and I'm so grateful for him in my life. And I can also see as in Be The Medicine that we're working on specifically relationships and letting these old pieces fall away. I have noticed the roles that I have carried as a caretaker, as <laughs> feeling responsible for so many people in my life and allowing those pieces to fall away because that's where your energy goes. It's not within yourself for your own healing. It's directed to them. And the best place that you can be for the change in others is to be the most beautiful, bright, sparkly you that you can possibly be. <laughs> You're really very um, a, an excellent speaker that you really speak from the heart and you speak from wisdom and you speak from clarity and the compassion that you've uh, embodied in your journey is very evident. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to say, oh, and I appreciate Jennifer Scott for saying thanks for, for so many ways to get assistance, the book, the programs, free lives. I want people to know, like, this is not about the universe of more. Choose what um, is really uh, resonating for you that if, if you'd like to work with me live, here's how it's available. And if it feels like, um, no, I'm gonna read the book. Like so many people have written and told me, like I read that book and it opened up my whole world. I accessed my power, this healed, that healed, this changed. It, it's not about, um, I have to do this, but I can't, or, you know, like don't buy the mind that says, you can't have this, you don't have enough money, you know, or, or whatever it says to you. Just always look what will contribute the most to me. I'll choose whatever contributes the most to me. Like for you, you've done a lot of the, the work with me live and, and online too, but it's, you know, it resonated with you and you chose that and it, it will always create more when we do. In fact, do you want to like share a minute on that, on that part of your journey and how you may have, um, like, how do you navigate those decisions from yeah. where you were with like, I've got to do all these things to fix versus like, oh, I'm going to keep receiving what nurtures me. Yeah. And for me, the journey was to get from the head to the heart <laughs> because my head, the monkey mind will come up with a crazy million reasons why not to do it. Right. Why, why it's, why I shouldn't choose that. But I knew somewhere deep within me that it was a fit. And sometimes it was maybe getting into a meditative space or I like to practice a lot of heart focused meditation and gratitude and I and that really and you know, asking like what's the specific yeah. breath work you used mm -hmm. as well. Sure. And well, I used your Ignite Your Light program. That was one of the first things that I that I did. I, I do some that specifically speaks to the vagus nerve to be able to relax and and cause peace within the whole body. And I can feel my chest just completely open up after I do things like that. And when I do your Ignite the Light, I can feel things releasing like crazy <laughs> when I go through that. And there's some that I do throughout the day. A lot of it is in the nose, out the mouth. Allowing your belly to expand bringing in that divine light throughout all of your being and then centering within your heart. 
And then what does your heart say? What do you feel drawn to? What lights you up? What fuels you? What brings you joy? And is what you're considering, is this a piece of it? Will this be a part of where you want to be in the future? Is, is this a piece that will bring you the most abundance to your highest and greatest self? That this is the place that I ask is right here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and that's what others are saying too. I was fed up being passed from one doctor to another with their own opinions. I feel yeah. so empowered now that I can feel what's right for me. I don't have to hang on everything they say anymore. Yes. And someone in Facebook said, EH, embracing health has changed my life in many ways. Dr. Kim, I've learned so much. I take action very quickly with one of the tools and start feeling better in a short time. I'm more in the present moment than I've ever been before. I'm 76 years and I'm much more confident than I have been in a long time. Thank you so much. This is beautiful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I, if you guys have more questions, you can reach out um, to us at, at support at drkimd.com. Um, I don't know if there's anything you want to add, Kimberly, or a place where people can find you or PM you if I, I think people may have questions. <laughs> Not that I want to overload you, but I, I think there may be a way that's easy. Absolutely. I, I started a Facebook page, Good News Daily. And you're welcome to check that out. I have lots of videos that I've recorded in there. Um, good, good news daily. Good news daily. Yes. And okay. <laughs> there's lots of it's very informative. And I go into more depth about some of the things that we've chatted about. Um, you're welcome to private message me. I do work privately with clients and I am working with Dr. Kim on setting up a something a little bit more expansive to work with um, possibly groups of people at a time. But yes, I'd be happy, happy to answer your questions. If I can help support you in any way, please feel free to contact me. Beautiful. Yeah. And, and I want to say again, like it's, it's palpable the, the level of how you've grounded your presence into your body. It's, it's not just information you're sharing. Like it's people will feel that transmission. Yes. Um, I feel it when you speak that it's, soothing and grounding me into myself. And I, I think people will really feel that. And that's kind of what we're speaking to with this work. It's not just an idea or a thing to fix the thing. It's yes. a new embodiment. And, and that's, you're like really living testament of that. So thank you so much for coming to share with the community. Uh, you're, you're beautiful and amazing person. And I'm so grateful that you're here. Oh, thank you, Dr. Kim. I feel the same about you. So grateful for you and all the work that you do. You have been such a blessing to me and so much gratitude to you all right bye everyone thanks for being here we'll be here every week 11 a.m mountain we'll be doing this um, mind body tv series uh, mind body miracles uh, for the next few weeks here and I, I, there'll be some amazing guests you can ask questions and and just share your own insights and your own journey and uh i look forward to seeing you soon we do have also on the website if you'd like to um get on my mailing list drkimd.com there's um a quiz there if, for any of you who are not already on the the email that will guide you through some free resources for yourself a little more specifically and what may really move the most energy for you and allow you access to um your deeper deeper self and deeper vitality so you can subscribe there lots of love thank you so much for being here oh the facebook name is good news daily where you can find kimberly hayworth and connect with her thanks for being here right here bye-bye bye, -bye. bye. <laughs>